Hey friends, I use the M1 MacBook Pro for a bit more than three months as my main machine and it is time to share my long time experience and tell you what I like and what I don't like about this machine. Check out the timestamps to jump on the parts of the video what you are interested in, but I will start very shortly answering my questions. So, are they good? Yes. <laughs> Can I recommend them to almost everyone? Yes. So, but let me start with problems, what I was running in with the new M1 MacBook Pro. So, cons. Multiple display support. As you may know, M1 Max supporting only one external display. You can get DisplayLink adapters that can convert USB ports to HDMI or DisplayPort, but performance will be not the same as for natively supported display. I personally decided to do not get one of those for two reasons. They are quite pricey, <laughs> that one reason, and I can't be sure that they will work after Apple will release new updates for MacOS. Whenever MacOS is updated, adapter may need be updated as well, because those are third-party drivers in that display link box. So I decided to stick with one external uh, monitor, 49 inches wide enough to do not need extra space and I still have my MacBook open it next to it. Lack of a GPU support. One display is enough for me but if you are day trader and need six displays you are out of luck. External video card could solve this problem but currently M1 MacBooks are not supporting external video cards. Most likely Apple will bring support for them back to Mac later but it is not here yet. M1 Max C attached video card and closer in uh, system settings but you can't use it. Bluetooth was weak point of this machine on beginning. I am using Sony, I don't know, MX4 headphones. Uh, I'm using Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth mouse and those are working stable now. Seems that this problem is solved in the latest MacOS versions. I saw more compliance online about Mac Mini, from Mac Mini users, but as ex-owner of Intel Mac Mini, I can say that I saw quite a big difference in Bluetooth signal power between MacBook Pro and Mini. I, I'm talking about Intel machines that could be somehow related with this Mac Mini body and that enclosure, that, that Mac Mini body maybe is not so great for Bluetooth. But yeah, I don't know situation about Mac Mini now, but on MacBook Pro, Bluetooth works just fine. SSD writing issues. Some users reported extremely high drive writes, which could significantly impact SSD drive lifespan. SSD drives has limited amount of data writing cycles and at some point it will become unstable. That's just how they work. Of course, I check it on my SSD as well and information available online. I find one case with 3% of SSD resources uh, used in two months of usage. That's quite a lot. And I check in my drive and I see that 1% is used in three plus, not four months, but let's say three and a half months. So for me, that looks very better and quite, let's say, okay. I think that this problem, if this problem exists, <laughs> That could be partially because of Rosetta apps and partially because of early versions of MacOS for M1 Macs. Eventually that should be solved, so I do not see that big problem, but worth mentioning anyways. One issue that annoys me the most is external camera support and problems with that. I used my this camera, Yosser camera what I am using right now for this video as webcam. Camlink, let me find, yeah, here it is. I have this Camlink adapter. This Camlink adapter works really nice with uh, my Hackintosh and I can use it to connect my EOS Air as a webcam. Camera is just recognized as webcam in any app, uh, Skype, Zoom, OBS, uh, Microsoft Teams, you name it. I didn't run in single problem so far with this on Hackintosh. On M1 Max, camera freezing. After a short period of time usage, I tried three different USB hubs. I have one cheap no-name hub, I have Caldig Soho hub. That's quite good. I used it with and without power cable attached. And I have here. <laughs> 
I have a Kingston workflow station. The result was the same with all, all the hubs. And also I found multiple external web cameras reported as not working in Apple community forums. Hopefully this will be solved eventually. If you need a camera for calls only, you can stick with this horrible built-in camera. Looks horrible, <laughs> but kind of works. But if you are planning to stream content online and use better cameras, you may be out of luck. Software compatibility. Yeah, Apple Silicon Macs are available for consumers since November. Software developers had a chance to update all the apps and drivers using developer kits since um, summer of 2020. But all those months later, general software compatibility, compati how do you say that? Compati software just doesn't work yet. So it's, this problem is not still fully solved. Sure, apps will be running in the Rosetta environment, but there could be problems as well. My example will be about cameras again. There are utility developed by Canon. Basically, that is a driver which allows to use USB-C cable to connect camera with laptop and use it as web camera. So, seems that this driver still running is Rosetta emulation and I do not see it in native applications, but I can see it in, in OBS or OBS Streamlabs, which also running in Rosetta emulation. One application is working, another application is working, but they are not interact good with each other because of this Rosetta environment. So check out if software which is essential for your daily workflows working on m1 max before buying one so that also quite a big con so let's talk about some pros uh, so why anyone after all the listed problems would like to use m1 macbook if that mean i definitely have a shiny object problem and i happily jumping on any new hardware from apple <laughs> okay just kidding. Let's talk about my reasons a bit later, but for everyone else, if you need Mac today, I highly recommend buying M1 Mac. They have great price performance ratio comparing with any Intel Macs from the current product line. I just do not see reasons to invest in technology that Apple decided to left behind. They are planning to drop Intel CPUs and they said that in two years they will move all the product line to ARM processor. So no reasons to buy Intel computer today. And most of the issues that I listed are first generation problems and can be solved with software updates. So hopefully soonish those will be solved. Next one in my pros list is battery life. Battery life is just crazy. As Apple likes to say about iPads, all day long battery life. So this is the same. Finally, I can grab MacBook only and go to work in the coffee shop or just move over to the couch. I have this uh, nice sleeve for 16 inch MacBook Pro and I use it to carry my 16 inch MacBook Pro around. Of course, it is a little bit big, but possible to carry around, but I have to carry around charger with my 16 inch MacBook Pro as well, because battery life in 16 inch MacBook Pro is not near close to the same one. And as soon as I have to grab a charger, then this is becoming a bit ugly. This sleeve <laughs> looks horrible and uh, it is not very handy to carry around. So that always was a problem to choose what to bring with me. iPad to have never ending battery life, but limitation in tasks, what I, I can do, or Mac and charger. So, why I am using the M1 Mac as my main machine if it has all those listed problems? The answer is simple, that is speed. It is impossible to go back from rapidly fast and silent M1 MacBook Pro to slow and very noisy 16 inch MacBook Pro. Before I bought this M1 MacBook Pro, I had a plan to use my Hackintosh as my main computer for video editing and programming and get smaller and cheaper MacBook for traveling and work outside the home office, but sorts out that this M1 is powerful enough to be used as mine machine and still is compact and relatively cheap as well. So that is still base of the product line from the Apple, cheapest of the 
computers. Hackintosh is close in compiling speed to the M1 MacBook Pro, but still it is slower. And I recognize that it sounds like first world problem if I have to wait for a few seconds on simulator or preview in canvas uh, in Xcode to show changes that I did in code, but that interrupts workflow. If I have 10 to 20 seconds to wait, I feel that I could jump on a phone to check out messages or Twitter or DMs, whatever, and a few minutes later I can find myself still scrolling through the phone or browsing YouTube or whatever. I'm working better if I put myself in optimized workflow in, in and environment like that, so there is no way back to Intel Mac for me personally. I still have my Hackintosh around for just for backup, uh, if something will happen with my M1 MacBook, my 16-inch MacBook Pro was in a repair twice, so <laughs> I, I like to have backups now, and uh, and I will use it and using it for live streams because of all of those camera issues. But that is it. Yeah, and yeah, I have Windows Drive here as well. Casually, sometimes I'm gaming. Tricky question: Which one to buy? So, most asked question, 8 GB versus 16 GB. Save a bit money and get 16 GB of RAM. With 8 GB of RAM, your machine will swap like crazy. There is no magic. 8 GB are 8 GB. Sure, if you are using your machine for light internet browsing and emails, 8 GB is fine, but that's not the case for developers. Lots of open tabs with documentation, and tutorials, virtual machines, IDE, Xcode, Android Studio, whatever, simulators running in parallel, that all is asking for RAM as much as possible. So 16 gigabytes, you need 16 gigabytes. If you are looking for a desktop machine, good for you. Mac Mini is cheapest of all of them. M1 MacBook Air versus M1 MacBook Pro is a bit more complex question. Objectively, M1 Air is better price performance of choice. So, <laughs> answer is here. The price difference between both machines is about 300 euros and about the same in dollars if you are looking in US prices. For that price difference, you can get upgrade of 16 gigabytes of RAM for your MacBook Air. So, which machine I bought? I got MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD. I choose it because of better battery and because of uh, fun to cool it down if it will be needed. Uh, I'm not brave enough to buy first generation of funless laptop from Apple. <laughs> so, and yeah, I'm using it for three and a half, almost four months, and I have no regrets about buying it. At the same time, I'm looking forward to seeing the updated design for machine and, of course, solve the issues that I mentioned. For those who still have a year or few years old Max, most likely you can skip this model to see what will come next. And if you need to buy Mac today, congrats! Cheapest Mac from bottom line of the Apple product is the best one what you can buy today. But if you still need Windows, for example, dual boot uh, Windows, Macs, and maybe even Linux machine as well, then Hackintosh is still a good option for that. Check out uh, this playlist if you are interested in how I built this, uh, my Hackintosh, why I built, how it works, and so on. Apple still selling Intel powered Macs and will continue to do that at least till the end of the year, so they will get macOS updates for next 5 or even 10 years. And until then, Hackintosh will work fine. Okay, thank you for watching, see you on next one, bye.